That is such a key part of my own recovery is having the community. The Phoenix has been such a huge part of that. And like, I don't even want to imagine recovery without like a strong community. I, I, it's, it's impossible to me. And so I feel like my art in this story needed that in order to be as truthful and vulnerable as and honest as, as this project needs to be. When I saw like, again, that Carson was someone that was also in recovery, I was like, this is, this is the only way this album can get made is with someone who understands mm. the experience because because in us sharing our experiences, me writing it and then Carson contributing into it and now us giving it to other people who, you know, hopefully can relate to in some capacity, like that's that's what, that's how community is built. Stories are powerful, powerful. Welcome to the Rise, Recover, Live podcast brought to you by The Phoenix. This is a space where people impacted by substance use can come to share their story of strength and resilience, get open and honest, and inspire hope and build community through shared experience. We'll be talking to people in our community on their own recovery journey and shine a light on the topic of recovery in all its forms. Maybe you'll hear some of your story in theirs. Let's show the world that together we rise, recover, and live. Welcome, everybody, to yet another episode of the Rise, Recover, Live podcast. We are your hosts, Bryce the Third, he, him, pronouns. Liz McKean, she, her pronouns. Liz, what up, though? <laughs> that was a great voice. Um, nothing. I'm just, I'm excited to be here. We, we were saying we haven't been in a in a podcast room with, with four people in a while, and it just, it feels like a party. I'm excited it to is. be invited. <laughs> it's, it's literally a party. The way I I'm know. looking at things over here, I made my square the smallest, and like all y'all squares are the biggest. And it's just <laughs> nice. Like, I'm in nice. good company. I'm in good like company. It. How's your energy? Mine is, uh, it's good. It's, you know, I tell you, Man, we've just been recording a lot on Mondays. So I feel like every time I'm like, well, it's Monday. Um, so, you know, it's Monday, but it's a good one. Sun is shining and I get to see some wonderful, friendly faces. And yeah. How about you? How's your energy, Bryce? Uh, well, we both got yellow on. I think like when I wear <laughs> bright colors, <laughs> like I'm, I'm working to be uh, an exemplification of like good energy. Mm, uh, you are my I, sunshine. I feel, I feel like uh, I feel like I'm I'm in that space. Like I'm. I'm feeling good. I'm excited about this conversation. Uh, and it's just been a great day thus far. Oh, so, That's nice. Yeah. All Kids right. are home wow. from uh, for midwinter break and they chilling. Everybody just chilling. It just feels easy. Nice. I'll take it. Well, I'm going to send it right to you to introduce our wonderful guests today, if you don't mind taking the And I'm going to send baton. it right back to you because uh, why are you sending stuff? No, I'll play with you. <laughs> <laughs> so today uh, we have two uh, phenomenal guests. One is podcast alumni uh, and the other is new to the podcast, but has been on Phoenix live streaming programming. Um, we did a concert. What was it in... November, we did a concert. September. September, September, yeah, Recovery Month. We did a a live concert, and 30, 40 of you all streamed in and and watched it live. And it was a phenomenal concert. Both of these guys performed. I performed as well. The crowd Mm -hmm. was dope. It was at a treatment center in Chelsea, uh, in in Manhattan, in New York. And it was just a beautiful time. Uh, But I'm excited to introduce you all again to Austin and for the first time to Carson, a.k.a. Six Foot Five. What's up, guys? Hello. What's up? Uh, thank y'all so much. Happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday. Thank y'all so much for having us. We're we've been really excited to come and just like talk to the Phoenix, but also to be able to talk about this project. So y'all are the first ones that we're getting to talk to about this with. That's not just <laughs> us. So we're excited. <laughs> Nice, nice. Thus starts the press run. Uh, you, you got the you got the butterflies, Austin. How do you how do you feel? Oh uh, my god! So wait, I got so many damn questions <laughs> for, for the listeners. Time. For the listeners, if you have listened, and we'll link the episode that Austin was on before in in the bio. But for those who have heard Austin's episode, you might have remembered him mentioning uh, uh, that he had a project he was working on, and it's a project. It's called Stages. And it's recovery centric. Um, there's a lot of bits and pieces in there. I got about halfway through the album before I got here to to sit in, in, in this podcast recording. So I heard like there was one song where it's like uh, I'm gonna I'm fight my sponsor and like it's like it's some 
there's some recovery stuff in there. So it was, it was cool to hear that, but also have the vibrations. Um, but where you're at with it now, Austin, is you're, you've, you've completed the album. Yeah, right? yeah. Carson and I just distributed. So it's it's all happening. It, if, uh, it's been about a year in the making, um, less than a year, honestly, of actually recording and producing. Yeah. But um, it's done. It's it's not, It's we were saying, Carson and I were like, it's not just ours anymore. So yeah, that, that's where mm. we're at now. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's a wonderful beautiful scary anxiety ridden experience yeah, yeah. it is it is yeah because it feels like um it feels like it's been our little baby and we're gonna get a little postpartum depression artistically yeah. mm. when it when it's out and 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 it's be it's beautiful it's gonna be beautiful and i think those who are uh, who need to hear it are gonna hear it and and really really digest it well which is stunning in its own way but it it won't be it won't be our little sort of secret anymore mm. Mm. So, the, the something beautiful of, and something sad bittersweet about it all yeah the process of creation i think that like this the last part is like the birthing part if we're to continue with the metaphor <laughs> like getting it out and letting other people have it have the experience with it and get the feedback that we couldn't have gotten in a room by ourselves creating it. Yeah. That I think adds a body to what it is that we've created. You know, there's a spirit. And then when we give it to the world, now it's the body. Now we get the feedback. Now we get to see what people thought about it. Now we get to hear the stories about how it helps people or how people use it. You know, um, are you all excited about that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that I, there's there's a quote I've, I want to say it's Rihanna actually that's like the last part of of creating something is sharing it like that's like that's the ultimate goal of it is that once you've put everything into it like the last stage of it is then to give it away and I think that that's um, as nerve wracking and as like you know as hard as it is to let go it's also what's so exciting it's a new stage you know the album stages it's a, yeah. it's the next stage of See what, what this project there. is so <laughs> I think that we have put so much of ourselves into it and to this project that it's going to be really cool to see how other people bring their stories to it as well. Mm. I I came to Carson last spring. Yeah, it was like last April, I want to say, or March, probably March. No, it was March. It was March because I had just gotten back from rehab. Yeah. Um, And you reached out and you didn't know that I had just gotten back from rehab. So when we were talking about it, um, I think I had just uh, disclosed that, but it was, so it was, it was March. Yeah. Yeah. It was March of 2023. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was March, 2023. And something had happened like in my soul, my spirit where I had um, just couldn't stop writing about recovery. Like I, I hadn't mm. done it ever. Like I, I, I had just recently had celebrated my two year anniversary at that time of recovery and um, not, no part of my recovery had been actually about writing my story or my my uh, experience with it. I had started writing again, and I talked about this the last time I was on the podcast, how like, you know, one of the greatest gifts that recovery gave me was being able to make music again, because I hadn't been for a long time. But mm. even though I started creating music again, um, I hadn't reached any like new topics. I kind of was going back to old stuff and kind of completing projects that had been interrupted because mm. of my my substance issues, I hadn't reached the stage of like writing something new or like making music that was like completely new to me and touching on the topic of recovery. And then I started and I couldn't stop. And the majority of this album stages was actually written within like three weeks because once I started, I ended in a song, something else came and something else came. And it just was like this ricochet, like experience of just like, I have to get this story out. I have to get these stories out. And once I started writing it, it just never stopped. And then even though Carson hadn't disclosed it to me, we're friends on Facebook. And I had seen like a post that Carson made. And he had mentioned like, like briefly, you said something about, you know, becoming sober. And it felt like a sign where I was like, oh, like, I need to I need to talk to Carson about this. Because uh, backstory, Carson actually was the producer of my first single ever, uh, Closer to Clear. Mm. And um, yeah, so we, we we go back, but I had never worked with him since Closer to Clear because 
Carson is a very busy man. He he is like the premier producer in New York City, especially within the queer community. And so I I knew that like when I went back to asking him to do a project, like I had to be ready. I had to be ready with the project and be like, this is what it is and and be able to like pitch him the you full day. You were ready. Oh my God. <laughs> so when I saw that he had, uh, that he was sober and I didn't know his whole story, I just saw that he was sober. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to talk to Carson about what I've, what I've been working on and what my, what my dream and my goal is with this. And, and so I did. And like you said, it was like March and I had no idea that you had just gotten out of treatment. And it was just kind of like all of these things aligned where it was like, oh, the timing is divine for this. And, and it just seems like the the perfect time to make this happen. Um, but yeah, Mm. yeah. Mm. And it was, and it was for me too, because I had just gotten back to the city and Austin reached out and, and he sent me, cause I, I prefer, I like when artists send demos, um, if they have stuff already written, um, so I can get sort of a whole feel. And was, when he sent it to me, it was, it was 11 tracks. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Um, I had, I would never taken on, I think the most I had produced at that time was, uh, an EP of six tracks. And so looking at it as like an 11 track project, I, I, I was like, okay, I'm just back in New York. This is 11 tracks. This is massive. Uh, wow. How, how can I be a part of this? What can I do? Uh, what is going on? So, so when you reached out to me, it was, everything was, it was all demos and all the pieces were there. I mean, everything was, was written. And he, Austin is such a smart writer. Um, and I say smart in a way that it's, it's, it's when you listen to the lyrics, it, it, it tells a story and it's, it's more, it's more deep than just, you know, rhymes. It, 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 he plays with words really, really well. So as I listened to all the demos, I was like, huh, this really hits home right now. <laughs> All right, so I don't want to stop the behind the music. I think uh, it's just my little contribution Please. here. I think it's just amazing because music itself is an act of creation. And just to navigate the realm of creating in solitude is an interesting process. But then you rope somebody else in, and now, now we're talking about collaboration. And if you think about recovery... Um, intentional living, th- that contribution of community to who it is that we become as we like grow and evolve into who it is we're, we're turning into, like we need other people around. And so with you, Austin, sharing your art with Carson and you all putting your heads together and with the content of what it is that you're creating, uh, so aligning with your life, Austin, in a way that's like, I got to get this out. And in your life, Carson, where it's like you're hearing these lyrics and it's like, yo, this is exactly where I am. And then y'all putting that together and creating something that now I can consume in a coffee shop in Dearborn, Michigan. Like that's that's just an amazing process. Well, yeah, I mean, thank you. It, it is. And I think that what you said about recovery and community, I think that is such a key part of my own recovery is having the community. The Phoenix has been such a huge part of that. And like, I don't, I don't even want to imagine recovery without like a strong community. I, I, it's, it's impossible to me. And so I feel like my art and this story needed that, needed that in order to be as truthful and vulnerable as and honest as, as this project needs to be. And so with, when I saw like, again, that Carson was someone that was also in recovery, I was like, this is, this is the only way this album can get made is with someone who understands the experience because in us sharing our experiences, me writing it, and then Carson contributing into it, and now us giving it to other people who, you know, hopefully can relate to in some capacity. Like that's that's what that's how community is built. And we were saying like music is so it's with you in ways that like that no one else or nothing else can really be like in those darkest moments or in those brightest moments, like the way that music can, can help heal is unlike anything else. And so, yeah, do you, it, it felt like we, there needed to be someone who got this story in order to create the music so that it can be what it needs to be for everyone else. 
Yeah. Mm. That's just such a, I mean, I think about, <laughs> about all the things that when we're in addiction, I feel like so many of us, I've heard this outside of myself, so I'm going to say we pretty confidently, but so many of us, I, I think, think that we're going to be losing something, you know, when oh. we get sober. Um, often it is like, I think for, for a lot of folks in, in the creative realm, like there's, there's something scary about being like, am, am I still this person without this that I've always had as like a, you know, weird companion to my creative process. And, but then you look at what happens in recovery communities and we go from hiding so much of ourselves and feeling so much shame to, and, and only being able to be open when we, you know, are under the influence or whatever. And, and then suddenly you have people that are just sharing their story with, with no shame. Like, it's like, you're able to just turn yourself inside out and show it to people. And that's how you get better. And that's how other people are able to share themselves with you and get better. And, and then you can do it on a big stage the way, the way you're doing. I mean, someone in Dearborn, Michigan, or who the heck knows, you know, Timbuktu can be listening to your music. And maybe that's the first invitation they need to start sharing what's in side of them that they thought was only them. And Carson, how did that feel? Because I mean, really, that was like your first step into maybe, I don't know, maybe maybe it wasn't, but like you were just getting back from rehab. And here it was, it was like on a silver platter, like an invitation to be part of this sharing. Like, what did that feel like? I was very, and it's, 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 I talk about this with Austin. We've talked about it a bit. I was very hesitant at first. Because just coming back from the city um, and just getting my mind right sized, as they say, and and getting this 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 demo, this mixtape of eleven tracks, and I hadn't taken on a project of that size mm-hmm. before. I was I, I said to him, I was like, you know, I think I can take on, uh, you know, t- two or three, maybe two or three tracks, but the whole thing I don't think I can, I can take on. I think about a week went by. <laughs> And I was looking, I was looking, I was searching uh, for songs that I felt like I could relate to in music that were specifically about recovery and sobriety. Um, For example, Kelly Clarkson's uh, song Sober, uh, Pink song Sober. Um, But those those were just the two songs that were on repeat for me and playing over and over. And I was like, just really not, at least... As far as I as I searched, uh, there isn't really much out there that's directly related musically to sobriety and recovery. And so I called Austin back about a, a, a week later, knowing and realizing this that I that I realizing that I I needed this uh, as well. Um, and I said, "I'm in. I'm totally in. I'm all I'm all in. When do we When do we start?" Going and going through and listening to the demos too. I mean, going back to what I said about Austin being such a smart writer and a great writer, all of it I could relate to. Even going through my first year of recovery and sobriety, there were some things I couldn't relate to at that very moment, but felt like as as the year progressed, the tracks became more clear and I identified with them even more because they were an experience that was had by somebody who's had more more time, uh, more sober time, more recovery time than I have. So for me, I, this project has really been, it was a friend to me through my first year of recovery. Um, it held my hand in a lot of ways that others couldn't. Uh, like Austin was saying, that music is there for you when you know, in ways that other people can't be, you know, I'd find myself singing AA in the shower, you know, I'd find it and I'd, I'd, I'd have it with me in, in some of the most intimate moments where, where nobody else was, was around. So, um, for me, it was incredibly healing. And the more that we got into it, the more passionate, personal, moving the whole project became for me. So this, this, this body of work is intimidated as I was, uh, first taking it on. Um, when we, when we started running, it was, it was, it just, be, it was so clear that this is just a, a masterpiece. I think, I think some of the best things are kind of birthed out of that willingness to do something that maybe initially 
Like, man, I ain't doing that. Shit. I'm not doing that. <laughs> like that. Like that. Like that's scary. I am not doing that. Yeah. And then you think about it, you meditate on it, you do your research, your soul searching, yeah. and it's like, okay, there may be a need for this. And maybe I'm the only one who sees this. And, and maybe I am best equipped to be able to show up and contribute to that. And so, you know, kudos to you, Carson, for having the willingness to like show up and, and double guess your first thought. Where's like, Matter of fact, let me call this guy back and, and and sign up for this. This is this is important. I want to contribute to that. Yeah. I swear it was like it was it was like um the word that that I heard earlier was divine. It was like a divine moment for me where I was like, this feels right. This feels mm-hmm. good. This feels right. And in my head it was like, you haven't done this before. Now is the time to do it. You know, you're sober. Take take a leap of faith. What do you have to lose? You're back in the city. You're back from rehab. What do you have to lose? Like you, you know, <laughs> it yeah. was it was after hitting rock bottom in uh, December and, and January. I felt like I had I had I had absolutely nothing to lose and only gorgeous things to gain mm-hmm. from from this body of work. So it was like a divine moment where I was like, you know what, mm, we're gonna do this. We're gonna yeah. do this. Let me let me call Austin back and and say I'm I'm in for the whole the whole ride. And thank yeah. God he did because I truly cannot imagine. Like I don't. I said it before. I don't think that this would have been ma- made, and it wouldn't have been made as truthfully as it is if it wasn't for two people who really understand the story because they're putting their own perspective on recovery, like in it, you know, like I sure, maybe I could have found a way to do this just on my own even, but like having Carson there to talk me through like how he relates to the songs and then hear me out and let me like speak on why I wrote a song because sometimes you write things and you forget. I went to Carson once. There's this one song on the album called Side Effects and I went to the studio with him one day. Mm-hmm. I went into the studio with him one day and I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, I don't think this song needs to be on the album. I don't like this song anymore. And he was like, hold on. <laughs> he was like, well, when you first sang that song for me, like that was the first song on the project that made me cry. He's like, so let's let's right. go back to that moment and like be like, why did you write it? And I realized that like the song side effects is it's all about like realizing that you might have been using something else that's not a substance, but you're using it uh, in excess in order to heal yourself. Um, and in that case, it was love, you know, using a relationship and giving everything to this relationship and realizing that like it's taken over your substance use um, as a distraction uh, so that you don't have to face mm. the things that you are that cause you to use in the first place. And it, the song is all about like, no matter what you, what it is, if you use it to excess, there can be side effects that are harmful for you. Even something that feels as amazing as love, you know? And so I think that touching on that topic and it had been something that I wrote it and then I kind of was like, and now it's gone and I don't want to go touch it again because it was almost too vulnerable to like talk about this experience that I went through. But having Carson by my side to be like, Let's dig in again. Like, why did you write this song? And what does it mean? And what could it mean for other people as well? How, what would you, you telling this story, like, how could it help other people? And, you know, we had that conversation and then we do one take of the song and I'm in tears and Carson's hugging me. And it's like, you wouldn't be able to do that with someone who doesn't understand what you've been through, you know, who hasn't been through yeah. it in their own way. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, um, I heard that. And I was like, there's no way. I was like, no. <laughs> There's no way this is not being, this is not, this, this has to be, this has got to be on, on the album. And it's, it's interesting when you, when, when I look back and I think about it with you, Austin, because it's a perfect example of things that we can't necessarily see what others see, right? Or hear what others hear. And I heard something in that, that I don't, no, if you heard at the time that really, really spoke to me. And so I, 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 I pushed you. I was like, we, this, 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 is, this has got to be on, on, this has got to be part of the, the project. This has to be on the album. Yeah. You got, and then yeah. you came over and we, we, and, and I swear, I mean, we always do, we always do, um, we track vocals. We do like a rough take and then I build, 
an instrumental around around the vocals and so one of my processes and I got Austin back into studio into my studio and put him at the mic and hit record and it was that that whole song is one take and um oh let me get emotional even thinking about it but it was it was as a producer you you know when lightning strikes you're, you 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 just sort of sit back and you let the artist do their thing and you you're you you get that moment that gorgeous moment of being in the presence of something really amazing that happens once and you get to capture it and that song for me is one of my absolute favorites on the entire album for 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 a number of reasons but that memory of you being mm. at the mic in that one take and letting it all come out is is one of the main one of the main reasons i always say to that uh, a microphone is 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 similar to a camera in a way that it it the camera never lies i mean you know if you think about it in like the in the saying that people you know use and i mean now we have you know auto tune and now we have like fill like face tune and all that stuff but um the microphone for for emotions um it doesn't lie it picks up all of the 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 intentions and 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 um where things fall in your voice and how you articulate it the way you sing phrases the way that where you breathe where you run out of breath i it all connects to your body you know your body stores memories and emotions and so that song is is just one take of absolute raw beautiful, vulnerable. Let me catch my breath Didn't know I went so long without exhaling I'm finally waning I need to take a half step back To see the full scope of what we've been painting These strokes are changing And I think I may be coming down when you stop the ground from shaking And your head's no longer aching Cause you found the remedies to treat your pain There are always side effects To anything that helps you with the healing These ones got me reeling But I know I shouldn't run away from the thing That helps me numb the pain But concealing doesn't mend the brain it always comes with side effects Side effects There's something here, man. Like, I'm really hearing, like, at least for me, there's a spiritual element. For, so when I got when I got sober, like, mu music, my relationship to it, consuming it and creating it was like the closest thing to God that I had. God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, something bigger than me. And the, like still to this day, like I could be in my feelings, in my shit, and then I could turn on a song and it could just switch my whole being up, you know? And, it, and then even thinking about the process of the song that you all are speaking on, like in hip hop, you know, we, we call it ciphering. Yeah. But I've seen like it, it, I've seen that the parallels there. Like I've been in a room with Liz and Zach, the the, C, the CFO of uh, the the Phoenix, and we're bouncing around ideas and feeding off of each other. And this person to share their ideas, and because they feel safe to share their ideas, because they feel that this is a room where th those ideas are understood, then we can build off of those, and we're encouraged mm -hmm. to like it's a vulnerability to share ideas in such a way, you mm -hmm. know. And if you're working with somebody and like ah, that, even 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 like without resistance, but just like, bro, no, no encouragement. Or like, I just did this. Like you didn't, like you didn't hear that. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, but to be in a room where it's like, you're not gassed, but like people are lifting up maybe what you can't see. Cause when we create things, sometimes we can't see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I heard recently that, uh, the problem with history is that the people that make it can't see that they're doing it. Mm. You know? Uh, so th th when we're creating this timestamp, like you said, Carson, this this timestamp of my emotions in my life, recording the audio of that, like maybe I don't know because right now I'm in the midst of it, how impactful it could be once we share it. 
And, and this whole process of like, you know, because we can get technical and talk about like, you know, tracking out in the sessions and a, and a microphone and, and, and your diaphragm as you project. Mm. And but like ultimately, like this whole process is is creation. And this process is com- community. Like I'm building friendship. I'm, I'm building relationships. I'm, I'm getting vulnerable with somebody other than myself. And like, I think that's why, especially here at the Phoenix, why it's such an emphasis on music because there's so many parallels to the creation and the, con- con- the consuming music to mm. the process of like connection. Yeah. Completely agree. Completely agree. Couldn't have said it better myself. Spot on. And it's such a universal language as well. And the way the way that I think that this will be received is, I mean, I, I, I see, especially in the, the, the queer community, more and more sober curiosity coming out and more and more people that I know are, are, are getting sober. With that, you know, having this body of work out there and being music being a universal language and, and, and a, a, it's very easily, it's, it's very easy to feel isolated through recovery. And so when you have something like music that you connect to in such an intimate way, it, it just helps you feel that much less isolated and alone. It's well, you know, it's as the only person in this room that is not, does not make, make music. I think the, it's amazing how much I relate. Like, I, I think we all just so deeply need to be witnessed. You know, I, I think that's one of the reasons social media is just what it is, you know, and for better, or for worse, like we just, there's just this human need to be seen. And it blows my mind how much, you know, an artist like the, the three of you, you know, you are, you are able, you're being witnessed, you know, like, because you're, you're putting it out there in the world, but then also as people who are listening and who are receiving it, it's like to hear something that you can relate to. When I hear songs that it's like, oh my gosh, like those words are, they could have come from me, you know, it's speaking to me. Like I'm being Mm -hmm. witnessed. I could be all by myself and listening to, um, to, to music and it can, I feel like I'm seen and Mm -hmm. like, what a gift to give to the world to, well, and I think, again, we go back to community and sobriety. And I think that's why things like AA or the Phoenix, like that allows people to share their stories, to be in a space and share their story and be seen. That's why those are tried and true methods of people maintaining their sobriety because they are feeling seen mm-hmm. and they don't feel alone. Mm-hmm. So often why we turn to substances is because we feel alone. And so when you finally mm-hmm. are yeah. able to feel seen or feel heard and to be able to just like let things out like that's why that's why community like keeps people going you know and that's why music keeps people going because again you hear it and you're like I can put myself in this situation I can put myself into this story and now I don't feel like you know I'm alone on this world because ultimately like we all we all I read something else recently that was like uh, emotions are universal, even though circumstances are individual. But emotions are are universal. Mm-hmm. We all feel, we all feel mm-hmm. things, right? Mm-hmm. And so, if you can, yes. if even if though this is my version of this side of the pink cloud, like you can speak on the pink cloud and tell me your experience with it. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it all, it all connects. <laughs> I want to go towards what's happening next now that the project is on its way to being consumed by every everybody right but quickly <laughs> the process of putting something out that you built such a relationship with you know and Carson you've mentioned like you know I'm excited about the reception but like let's be honest like as creators we can't we can't know how it's going to be received, mm-hmm. right? Oh, and so of course. Of course. now, and, and that's what I learned too. Like once I put it out, it no longer belongs to me. Yeah, you yeah. know. So, so this tough. thing, Carson, uh, that you've said that you've built a relationship with and has walked you through certain aspects of your recovery and that you've grown with, like now you're letting it out into the world. And so I'm curious who you are now because of this process versus who you both were starting this process 
And um, I'm curious as to like what it feels like now that you're stepping into a new season. Austin, do you want to go first? I'll, I'll, I'll That's give a you. It's a beautiful question. question. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll talk on it first, I guess, to give you some time, because it's emotional. I think again, the album is called Stages, not necessarily because there's one song that's called Stages. There is, but, <laughs> but because it, it goes through so many different stages of my own experience with recovery, and also the process of like the different stages that you learn throughout recovery. And I think that that's also true of this process. There was a stage of getting myself to the the place of healing where I could finally write this story, getting myself to the point of being able to share that with Carson, getting to the point where we could become, you know, vulnerable enough and uh, and clear enough to create this whole world of this album. And now it's like the stage of sharing it and giving it to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that through this process, I have found so much more confidence in my recovery. It doesn't feel, I don't feel as vulnerable in the sense of, or insecure. I think I don't feel as insecure of like, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing this the right way? Like in my recovery, because through sharing my story and through writing the story and creating with someone else, I feel like I've fully acknowledged and understand that there are so many ways to do recovery. And this is my way and I can speak on it and I can sing about it and, and I can share that and tell people like what the way that I'm recovering and the way that I stay, you know, stay healthy in, in my recovery. So I think that by going through all these stages of creating this, this process, it's, it's made me so sure of my, it's made me more sure of myself and my healing. And I think that I just feel stronger than I ever have within myself mm. and my recovery. And that could have only happened by by sharing my story. Yeah. So I think that I'm, I, mm. I've changed because I just feel, I just feel stronger. And I think it's also because I've been vulnerable enough to make this with someone else and have been able to just break down the walls. One of the lines uh, in, in the final track in Hiding is, Going towards the light will give you the will to fight and open up your heart to finally let love in and stabilize. And I'm not going to hide from myself anymore, you know, and like that, that's how I feel. I, and, and it took going through making the whole album to even write that line. That wasn't in the original demo. That line came out after mm -hmm. creating this whole project. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I just feel so much stronger than I ever have before. And that's such a gift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carson, <laughs> I think I, for, for me, looking at where <laughs> I mean, when I got back, when I got back to New York, I was, uh, I was, uh, I wouldn't say I was a train wreck, but I was a wreck. I mean, emotionally, I was all over the place. I, I, I was so disoriented. This project, to be quite transparent, one of the difficulties about, about my story in, in, in substance abuse was I found that I enjoyed drinking and, and drugs. Uh, I fell in love with them and enjoyed them more than my art and what mm -hmm. my art was and, and, and became. Your relationship with, with I think, well, I, I can't speak you know, in general, but I'll just say about my experience. When I transitioned, uh, when my producing music transitioned from a hobby into a business, that was a really hard and strange pill to swallow, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> But uh, it was very, it was really difficult for me. And so I found myself enjoying drugs and alcohol much more. And so when I got back to the city and there was nothing, you know, there was nothing in my system. And this was the first project that I, that I started working on. And it was a beast of a project. It was, uh, it was 11 tracks. Now it's 12 technically. And it made me fall in love with not only recovery and you know that that phrase uh we came for the drinking but stayed for the thinking mm. uh, it made me fall in love with that with that phrase and, and 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 recovery but it also made me fall back in love with music and why i started creating music in the first place yeah in, in a lot of ways really it's 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 changed it's changed who i am as a person in recovery as an artist 
as a musician. There were things instinctually that I that that came out out of nowhere. I, I play around. I was I was talking to Austin about this too. In the in the album, you'll hear the acoustic guitar. It's Austin playing the acoustic guitar. You'll hear where it's more sort of muffled and and and, and faded. Like it, it's 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 in the room, and he's just at the mic. Whereas in other tracks, it's just part of the instrumentation. And so playing with intimacy um, and what that sounds like sonically and, and production wise were things that I didn't ever really think about much before. So that also gave me such an insight on, on emotion and, and how emotion influences sound and production and the way that you translate the music and the message to the listener through sound and what you do with it. I mean, I could, I could go on and on, but yeah, it's really, it's changed. It's changed me as an artist, as a person, as somebody who's gone through recovery and now entering their second year of sobriety. Um, it's been a really profound project to be, to be a part of. So, yeah. Such a beautiful thing to witness. And it's an honor for you all to even come and share this with us. Mm -hmm. And it's an honor for the world to be able to receive this project. And so what's next? I, I know, Austin, last time we talked we we were talking about some of the unique ways that you're going to share this with the world uh, with some live performances and, and some different activations. So what's next uh, coming up in the future? Well, in the very near future, <laughs> this album uh, drops on March 22nd everywhere. And on the night of March 22nd, um, I am producing a full-length event um, that is a combination of many of my loves. So we are sharing this album in its entirety live uh, for an audience in New York City and hopefully virtually as well. Stay tuned. And as I am performing this album live, I also have a company of dancers who are physicalizing the songs and creating a full through line of the story uh, through their movement that I've choreographed and am actively choreographing. Um, so yeah, it's going to be Stages, the live visual album, and it's premiering in New York City on March 22nd at La Mama, which is an amazing theater that I'm really excited that we are we are getting to put this show up at, at such a historic landmark in New York City. And yeah, the, the, the whole idea is when I was writing this album, I always, I always saw it. I always saw it in my mind. And it was not just like the lyrics, it was, it was the movement. And I felt like something as, as intimate and also vulnerable as like recovery is like needed to be physicalized because dance is so vulnerable mm -hmm. and dance is so intimate while also being expansive. And so, you know, with the music that we made, uh, Carson and I, I felt like it needed to be moved to. Um, so I'm really excited to get to share this story uh, through movement as well as music. Um, it just feels like it feels like the only way to do it justice. Um, so yeah, that that's happening very, very soon. I'm in the midst of rehearsals right now. And, you know, if I had hair, I'd be pulling it out because it's the biggest project. <laughs> it's the biggest project <laughs> I've ever, I've ever taken on. Um, but again, I, I told Carson this the other day, I was like, this is the, this is the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's also the easiest because because it's so honest. It's it's all honest and it's all in me and it's in the people that I'm creating it with as well. And so once once we get it out, it, it all it all happens so seamlessly. But it's it's a struggle. It's it's a hard, a hard, big uh undertaking, but but it's been going really well. And I'm super excited to be able to share this with as many people as we can. That's phenomenal. Yeah. That's phenomenal. And, and we told he Austin told me about about uh, his vision for 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 the for the for the album and and dance the dance element being being a massive part of it uh, outside of just you know auditory listening and I immediately loved it I, I I thought it was such a brilliant idea I knew he was a dancer um, Cole sent me clips of how choreographing is going and uh, the numbers and it's so fun for me to be able to listen to him behind the behind the scenes and directing. So I'm just, I'm so incredibly, I'm so proud of you, Austin. And it, it, I'm so, so, 
out of this body of work. Oh it was God. so fun making it with Carson as well, who was just like, he's such a collaborator, but like being able to be like, Carson, this needs to happen here musically because I see this movement in my head. And he was, and he yes. was like, okay, work. Like, let's do it. Like, that makes sense. Like there was this one song flashbacks and I was like, no, like the chorus needs to yep. drop. Like there needs to be a heavy <laughs> drop because I'm seeing this choreography in my head. Like, meanwhile, this is like in the summer and I haven't even chore like cast dancers yet, but I'm like, but there's movement here. So musically <laughs> this has to happen. And like, he could have been like, Austin, no, like, like, stop like we're not there yet but he was so on board with it movement wise as well as musically and i think that's again why all the pieces are coming together the way they are now because he was so down with the vision from the very beginning you know what that just made me think of i i know i heard this in a movie this is not something that i just like know because of i was good at history classes <laughs> or something but i heard that in the there's a, a train um, and they built the tracks through the Alps before they this even is had the a movie. I know what movie this is. Sorry, it's one of my favorite movies. Is it? It's it's under a... the Tuscan sun. Yes, yes. Oh my so god. Good. Oh, give me give me a woman re rebuilding her life in Italy, and I am all about it. So, I, uh, so anyways, they talked about how they built this train track before there was even a train that could make the trip through through the Alps, and like just that that faith of like, you know, I see it and it's going to happen. And I believe in it so, so much that I'm going to actually build the tracks and actually tracks, tracks, it just, uh, just all it really does. worked out <laughs> metaphor wise. Um, <laughs> but it just, it feels like, you know, everything that you've talked about is such a leap of faith in a really big way. Cause we don't do moderation and it works out for us <laughs> in sobriety. It didn't work out for us, you know, in addiction, right. but <laughs> it's just this, this huge leap of faith and trusting in yourself and trusting in right. others and, and trusting in the whole world to be able to put this music out. Liz, so that anyways, is such a funny thing that you tracks. just said, cause you're so right. Like we do not do moderation. And I think that's also <laughs> why making this album with someone who gets that, like who gets the mindset of like, you know, once you do something, you've got to do it huge you got to do it big and Carson like yeah got that like yeah. he gets that because we do we yeah. understand you know when we've been on the other side of it yep. it's like if you believe in something and if you put your like if you have that faith in it and like you fall in love with it like you just gotta go and mm -hmm. I think that that's mm -hmm. like again it's it talks a lot about the recovery community as well it's just like putting your faith into people who understand like who will listen and who get it and who are like, I'm here with you on this ride. Mm -hmm. And like, that is, that's recovery. Yeah. That's community. Like, that's what we're all doing here is we're <sighs> like, yeah, you know what? I, yeah. I understand maybe not again, it's the emotions. It's like, I have felt what you are feeling, even though we are coming from different places and I see where you want to mm -hmm. be. Right. So I'm going to go on that journey with you. Like, that's what this mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Is. And there's something for everybody in, in, in the album too. I do think that people who are going through recovery will find Easter eggs throughout the whole album of things that they can relate to and identify with like Liz, like what you were saying when you're, when, when, when you say, oh, I feel that I can connect with this. I feel like I could have written this and that feels so validating because you feel like, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not alone. You're not crazy that somebody else is with you in this and, and, and has experienced this and you're not alone, but there is really, there's something for, for, for everybody. I mean, there's, there's up tempos, there's gorgeous ballads. Yeah. It's just, it's just great. If you're asking Yeah. Me. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Well, I'm 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 super excited for the world to hear what I've heard half of thus far, and for me to hear the rest this evening. Um, and you know, if you're if you made it this far into the episode, it, I mean, obviously there was something for you here, but I think there's something for everybody in this conversation because uh, mm -hmm. um, if you're a music nerd or you're somebody like me and you're an art nerd and like you you paint you paint with these emotions and you mm -hmm. can hear a lot of that coming through the craft of our guests today. Mm -hmm. But also like you hear just the willingness to show up and create you, mm -hmm. you hear somebody learning how they can show up in relation to what it is that they've been pulled to get out of themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even hearing like the energy coming through our vessel and learning like how our vessel specifically uh, uh, it exhausts the energy that comes in. Cause like, you know, I, I, I write music. I wrote a book about one of the songs that I, I, I wrote. Like you, you never know how the ideas can co-mingle, coalesce 
And then it's like, okay, yeah, this is a song, but I'm seeing the dance right now. I'm seeing the choreography. And and I, I, sh mm. I shot this video, but like when I was writing the song, I seen the video because I, I saw the visual. It's like there's this energy, this creative energy that uh, a lot of times in addiction and alcoholism or uh, uh, in unhealthy living is stalled out because we don't mm. have a relationship with our ability to get it out. Mm -hmm. And so now that we are a part of that, now that we are intentionally tapped into it, like now that we can listen, um, there's just so many ways to get it out. And I think you two are, are, are a great example of what that looks like. And now we will be able to touch and listen to the music next month. I'm super excited when this episode okay. drops, it'll probably be around the corner or it'll already be out for you all to listen. We'll have the information in the link in the bio for where they can find the albums and, and find uh, the, the activations that you all are doing and, and the performances and stuff like that too. So yeah, we're, we're just excited to be a witness. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for letting us share this. So project. grateful for both of you. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and, you, and you're welcome back anytime. And uh, yeah. I'm excited for the next time I get to share a stage with you. Yes, all. hopefully very I'm soon. Yeah, next I time. See you. Let's talk I'm about so jealous. June. Everybody got to hang out last time without me. I'm coming. I know. I was I like, where's Liz? Next oh, you, hey, you got to go. <laughs> if Price is there, it's, it's a party. It's, it's, it's a, a party. <laughs> it's I know, yeah. I know. I was dancing in my living room last time when you all did that because it was live streamed and I was I was in my living room uh, dancing. I, <laughs> like, I get a little teary too and it's people that I care about doing cool things. So I, I'll be in the front row uh, jumping. Dancing. You're the best. Well, you're all, so I'll send you all so invites if you you're all. free in March to, to come stop by. It'll be a fun show. So, But if not, then very soon. Amazing. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Well, thank you both so much. And thanks for everybody who's listening for being part of this. Just, I mean, also, in addition to everything we've talked about, like, like, if you've heard this episode, you can see what happens when you do, you know, when you do have that courage to, to share yourself and that people just show up, like people show up and support you and, and will celebrate you. So however you want to share yourself listener out mm -hmm. there please do because we need you yes and we love you take a chance take Heck a leap yeah. of faith yeah. yeah do it build those train build tracks it, they will come yeah <laughs> exactly build those tracks knowing that the train will one day come exactly Amen. Ugh. all right well we love you and we will see you next time so now you're excited bryce liz how do i get involved with the phoenix well my friend it is super simple we actually have an app Head over to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store or look in the show notes of this podcast wherever you're listening to or watching this podcast and go download the Phoenix app. The Phoenix app makes it so easy to find classes that are near you or to access our virtual class schedule where you can hop on from the comfort of your home. You can also join our groups and have a conversation with someone from the Phoenix community from anywhere in the world. Please make sure that you join the podcast group where you can connect with Bright and I and other listeners. Everything that you need is in the show notes. You can also head to our website at www.thephoenix.org. And maybe while you're there, you click the volunteer tab and get even more involved.